and we wanted to try to explain to our audience in Britain where they don't have death row what it's like for people like you who are in this situation. Gregory Rousseau says he wants the world to know who he really is. Someone said to me, you have a right to get out there and tell people, show people who you are. And everybody behind me said, do it, bear. That's what they call me. They call you bear? Bear, big bear. So I signed yes. Are you in a cell by yourself? Yeah, single cell, a table, top shelf. Um, very small for a man my size anyway, so it's very small. Weakens the mind, make you vulnerable if you allow it. But my hope is I'm fighting for freedom. And until I'm strapped to the gurney or they open the doors, then I'm gonna keep fighting. That's my hope. I mean, I don't hope to spend the rest of my life locked up. I'm not hoping for a stay to continue interacting in this environment. That's not what I'm asking and working on. So most people do, so they just wanna live. And I mean, I wish us all to live, but this is not a place for a human being. So you're not wanting your death penalty to be converted to no. life imprisonment? That would be... No, ma'am. That would be worse? To me. I'm innocent of this charge. And sentencing you to death by lethal injection. Gregory Rousseau was tried and convicted 13 years ago for the killing of 75-year-old James Syvertson in his hometown of Tyler, Texas. How long is it the victim was brutally attacked, his head beaten in with a blunt object. We asked the Syvertson family for an interview, but they declined. Here's what Mr. Syvertson's daughter said at the time of Rousseau's conviction. I mean, there's always a payday for what you do, and I think he got what, you know, was coming to him. And we're satisfied um, with the verdict. The daughter of the man who was killed said that you were getting what you deserve. Do you deserve to be killed? No, ma'am, because, you know, in this situation, people, victims' family, never get, never get closure because they don't understand what closure is. They really feel like that they stand in this courtroom and they listen to the state put on evidence that they consider to be truth because they're looking for justice. The predatory nature of his attack on Mr. Severson shows you was a th there was a thrill in that for him. And I think that just shows what a monster he really is. The district attorney called you a monster. You paint the pictures, he's a dog, he's an animal. Like my mama had this, this disease and delivered this disease to this world. That's not justice. That's humiliation. Russo says police planted evidence to frame him because he knew of their involvement in the town's drugs trade. He says he never got a fair trial. Those claims were dismissed on appeal. The 12 people didn't even understand what was going on. They found me guilty based on I had an all-white jury, and this was a 75-year-old man, and I'm an African-American drug user. I'm hurt. I'm full of pressure. And uh, because that's my son. That's my baby. And he's the youngest of 10. And it's a hard thing to swallow. Gregory Russo's mother, Clara, still lives in Tyler, Texas. She's wary of saying too much in a small town where her son's been labeled a monster. But she's clear the death penalty is cruel. This is like you tie somebody up and beat him to death. That's cruelty. And the death penalty is nothing but cruelty. I may be saying the wrong thing, but ain't that's what you think about it? Cruelty? That's all it is. Gregory's mother has no intention of witnessing her son's execution inside the death house at Huntsville Prison. But Jason Clark, who works for the prison system, will be there. If you have life without parole as an option, why do you need a death sentence? Isn't it just barbaric? No. Uh, the death penalty is the law in Texas. So if you uh, commit a heinous crime, kill a child, kill a police officer, kill multiple people. That is a, a sentencing option uh, for that person. But given that the number of wrongful convictions, for example, that we've become aware of over the years, even the number of people who've been on death row and who've ultimately been found not to be responsible for the crimes they were convicted for, doesn't that inject a sense of doubt that means that there should be a reconsideration of the death penalty? 
you know, again, the death penalty is on the books in Texas. And I can tell you that offenders have a number of appeals, both at the state and federal level. Uh, I believe in the process. At yesterday's clemency hearing, the seven-member panel voted unanimously that Gregory Russo's sentence will yes. be carried out tomorrow. And are you thinking about what that moment will be? Are you imagining it? Are you trying not to think about it? What are you doing with that? I've witnessed a lot of people over the course I've been here walk out this building and never see them again. And I pray that they have peace. So during my praying for them, I was praying for myself because I'm already in line. So when that day come, I'm at peace today. So I have no problem laying down on that ground to accept whatever the state trying to do to me. But it's not gonna change the fact that they're strapping an innocent man to a bunk and inserting drugs in him just to get their satisfied. After 20 years, Derek Wheat, Eugene Johnson and Larice Glover finally in the embrace of their families. Although Derek's parents have died while he's been in prison. You, can you get a full sense of it yet? No, not really. Uh, it's just, you know, it's, it's bittersweet because I wish my mother and my father could have been here to see this because they was my biggest supporters. And,